Is scary, but scientifically speaking, makes sense. The Jurassic Park movies are built around a dream. Using science, humans could one day walk among the giant reptiles that used to rule the earth. Spoiler alert, we already do. Thanks to science, we know our planet is home to 10,000 or so species of living dinosaurs. We just call them birds. How do we know this is true? Well, let's leave the nest and bring birds' place on the tree of life into view. Everything on Earth with this sort of four-limbed, belly in the front, spine in the back, head on top arrangement is a tetrapod. Now last year we did a whole series on why tetrapod bodies are shaped this way, so check that out here or down in the description. Now, starting with a common ancestor of all tetrapods, amphibians branched off first, then us mammals, followed by turtles, lizards, and snakes, and then the group we call archosaurs, which contains crocodilians, pterosaurs, and finally, dinosaurs. Birds are in here. Zoom in on the dinosaurs, and we start to see some familiar faces from John Hammond's island. Now, there's a lot there, but the important part is that the birds we know today didn't branch off until way up here. I don't know about you, but when I look at a cassowary, I don't need any convincing that birds are dinosaurs. But let's assemble the evidence anyway. When most of us think of the dinosaurs, we think of bones. By comparing the skeletons of things that are very dinosaurish to things that are very birdish to the sort of dino birdish things in between, well, you're about to look at chickens in a very different way. The most famous dino bird is our friend Archaeopteryx. Its fossils give us a look at the transition between scaly reptiles and birdy birds, because they share features from both. Like birds, its forelimbs were enlarged like wings, its pubic bone pointed towards its tail, along with one of its toes, and it had fused clavicles. That's right, just like your Thanksgiving turkey, dinos from T-Rex to Archaeopteryx had wishbones. Now, in the reptile column, these dino birds had long tails, ribs around their belly, claws on their fingers, and teeth. I'm so glad birds don't have teeth anymore. Nightmare fuel. Dinosaurs became pretty front heavy as their forelimbs got bigger and later as they lost their tails. So in order not to topple over, they adopted a sort of crouching posture. We see it in birds from sparrows to ostriches today. In one of the most hilarious experiments ever recorded, scientists attached prosthetic tails to chickens and sure enough, with the added weight and back, they adopted a more dino-like walk. We think that how birds move their wings during flight even matches how velociraptors and their relatives would snap their forelimbs out to grab prey. But don't worry, despite what the movies say, they were only about knee high. Oh, and those clever girls should have been covered in feathers. Scientists have unearthed dozens of fossils showing evidence of feathered dinosaurs, but for some reason Jurassic Park and other dino movies have a strict no plumage policy. Feather forms range from simple quills with just a few branches, like what we see on baby birds, to full-fledged, fabulous feathers. Now, some fossil feathers even tell us what color they might have been. Oh, so fluffy. We're not quite sure when birds took to the air, but extinct dinosaurs were too heavy to have used feathers for flight. They probably served other colorful purposes instead. Birds today are tetrachromats, meaning they have four color receptors compared to our three. Many of them can see down in the ultraviolet range, which means they see colored plumage like these beautiful painted buntings in ways we can't even imagine. And today, birds use that exotic plumage in their ultra vision to put on some pretty amazing mating rituals. Extinct dinosaurs definitely had feathers, and they probably shared this tetrachromacy. So what's to say that we wouldn't find similar shows at Jurassic Park? In a previous video, I talked about how the T-Rex roar in Jurassic Park was made from a mixture of a baby elephant, a tiger, and an alligator. But what did dinosaurs really sound like? 
birds today create their symphonies using an organ called a syrinx, and their brains have evolved specially to create and decode those complex songs. Unfortunately, dinosaurs lacked both of these adaptations, so while we couldn't teach a dinosaur to talk like a parrot, it's likely that they made some interesting noises. The large hollow crest of Parasaurolophus could have been used as a sort of resonator. Scientists from Sandia Labs reconstructed what that might have sounded like. Why did birds survive as the rest of their reptilian cousins drifted off into the great fossil pit in the sky? Why don't we have T-Rex-sized parrots? After the meteor strike in the Yucatan, plants became more scarce. Without enough food, big-bodied herbivores went extinct, along with the large carnivores that ate them. But smaller meat-eating dinosaurs, the same lineage as that led to birds, were able to survive with smaller bodies and on less food. Life, uh, finds a way. From fossil to feather, it's clear that birds make their nest in the tree of life right next to creatures that haven't walked the earth for 65 million years. They are relatives of dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs. Stay curious.